This video was supposed to be a longer documentary about a new rescue story from the rescue zoo. About a year ago we rescued a group of foxes from the last fur farm for foxes in Denmark after it became illegal and gave them a happy new home here at the rescue center. This year on the day before Christmas we were informed about an illegal farm that was found in Denmark and 60 foxes were sitting together and 230 minks. From the 23rd and until the 29th of December we worked non-stop to rescue the foxes. On the 29th of December we were told by the Danish Veterinary and Food Administration that the farmer had cooled all the foxes instead of letting us rescue some of them. We want to show you guys parts of the unfinished documentary about rescuing another group of animals. To give you an insight into how we work for the rescue animals. And this is the story. About a year ago we released a small documentary about our work with helping on rescuing a group of the last fur farm foxes in Denmark. And uh, it's been an amazing experience and we were managed to take in four of these foxes and tell the story about how they're rescued, why it's so important to not use the foxes for fur in general. And on the day before Christmas, we were unfortunately noticed that a farmer has started up an illegal farm again and about 70 foxes were sitting and 230 minks. So our rescue story has now started all over and this is the last couple of days on us working non-stop on this new project on helping another group of rescue foxes. Nå, no, vi skal snakke om revne, hvor vi bor i dag. Yes! Ja. Mit første spørgsmål, det var sådan set, hvor mange du havde tænkt dig? Jeg har tænkt mig fire til seks. Mm. Alt efter deres helbredstilstand. Ja. Hvis det nu er, at de har det nogenlunde godt, og de kan gå lidt bedre end de sidste reve, vi tog, mm. så øh, kan vi godt tage seks, tænker jeg. Ja. Yeah. Feeding the new fur farm foxes mm. that we're gonna rescue. Hopefully, mm. right now information is limited, but we we hope we see. But feeding the newly fur farm foxes with the information we know from the last rescue, what can you tell us? That, like, how <laughs> is it gonna be? Okay, so feeding the new fur farm foxes with the information that we've got, which is changing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, is we're in a slightly different situation this time to what we were last time, because the ones we got last time were very young. They weren't used to having any other foxes around them. Whether this is true or not, it's again, it's hearsay at the moment, but I've been told that these foxes are used to being with other foxes, so they might have a bit more of an easier time with movement and things like that. So it is at the moment a guessing game. However, I think with the success we had before, um, we will do the same number with asking if we can't get some of the food with us. So they have the normal food they're used to, uh, to bring it over here with us. And then they will, because they have most likely been on the same sort of food as what the other ones were. Um, so we will start off with having them on that food and then gradually work our way to solid food as well as just so we can keep an eye on everyone's health because you never know what sort of fox you're going to get in. We will probably do the whole controlling of food with each individual because again I don't know if we're getting one, four, six, depends on how the situation turns out. Um, the controlling of who gets what to start off with just to make our life easier later on in life when we do manage to give them a normal living standard. Øh, men, men fire til seks, og så må vi lige afvente øh, Fødevarestyrelsen, når vi kan få en dialog med farmeren. Ja, for hvis vi skal så. have seks, så skal vi nok have en større bil, nemlig. Ja. Jeg har øh, talt med nogen, der vil køre. Mm, sådan. Sådan, så vi kan køre to biler derop, og vi har, kan have tre kasser i hver. Jeg tror nemlig godt, jeg kan have tre kasser i min, selvom at, at de der trådende spure, som de var i, de var lidt bredere jo. Ja, nej, nej, det, det tror jeg. Det er ikke så også, høje, ja. så nej, kan man måske sige. have to fra neden og en. Så, øh, men øh, to personer i den ene bil, og tre personer i den anden bil, og Nikolaj til at filme så meget som muligt. Ja. Så, øh, 
Når vi kommer derop, så skal vi nok ikke filme jer. Feeding the fur farm foxes, Alex. Yes, feeding the fur farm foxes. Can you explain to us how was it when the fur farm foxes came here? What was the procedure? Mm. How did you guys feed them? Yeah. In general, about that. Well, in general, about the feeding situation, well, we needed, they obviously came to us being very overweight and we could see them struggling on their legs with that sort of thing. So we had to be very precise in what we were feeding them and when we were feeding them. Um, so to start off with, we were, we had asked the farmer if we could get some of their food uh, to bring with us back, just so they had something they recognised, something they knew, something we could build our diets off of. So we got this liquid paste back with us. Um, and that's what we we only gave them that for the first few days, weighed out in, in, in amounts for each individual, so we could see how they were dealing with that. Then, because of them only being used to eating this mushy diet, we weren't uh, completely sure of how their teeth were, um, if their teeth could handle. Well, not only their dietary system needed to get used to a new diet, but we needed to make sure their teeth could go along with the process as well because they hadn't had any hard food in that entire time. So when it came to the meat sort of situation, we slowly got them from this liquid paste stuff, which we then broached into minced meats of a variety of, sort, of sorts. Um, and then we then worked on getting it into a more and more solid food base. So we have prepared some things. Og karantænen, den står jo sådan nogenlunde klar, så den skal vi have ryddet og, og gjort rent og nyt ind igen. Men til gengæld, så kunne jeg godt tænke mig, at vi fik tag på, på udanlægget den her gang. Mm. Ja, for jeg var nede og kigge tidligere, og det er faktisk ikke så meget. Det er sådan set meget pænt vedligeholdt ja. fra sidste gang. Ja, ja. så øh, det, altså, hvis det nu er, at de her ræve de kan gå i forhold til de sidste, mm. så skal vi have noget tag på. Sådan, så de kan kravle ud. Det er ikke så højt igen til hegnet dernede, til mm. udenlægget. Så vi skal have Simon til at sætte noget hegn på. Ja, det kan vi så. Til noget tag på, ikke? Ja. Det må du godt sætte i gang. Det gør jeg. Men der burde vi også have noget tårs. Det ja. Så. ja. Feeding the fur farm foxes when they came here in their behavioral mm. sense, or the behavioral training behind feeding the fur farm foxes. Can you explain that? Well, the behavioural uh, aspect of, of, of feeding the fur farm foxes, well, we had the dilemma that the foxes that we received, well, they weren't used to being with other foxes. They'd been kept in, in singular um, cages, so they weren't used to having to eat with other foxes being around them. They weren't used to having other foxes in general around them. So it was having to, straight off the bat, trying to get a, a controlled atmosphere so we both could help them uh, feeding-wise, health-wise, and making sure everything went the right way, uh, both with movements, behaviorals towards each other and behavior when it came to eating. So straight off the bat, we tried, we, we obviously observed them to see who was doing what and who, who was uh, more pushy and who wasn't. And then we were able to find a way of actually being able to feed each individual fox the amount that they needed, because some were smaller, some were bigger. Um, but being able to feed them in each individual fox, we knew exactly how much each individual fox was getting. But at the same time, because they weren't used to eating with other ones around them, we were having to control the situation. So that was it was a lot easier for us to do that. And now nowadays, you actually see how the, the, the stuff that we did all the way back in the start actually plays to our benefit nowadays, because we're able to sort out which fox needs what and be able to keep everything under control and make sure there's, there's no kerfuffles about what food they're going to eat. So, and then we'll have quarantine sædlerne from the last time. So we lige får uh, madplanerne. Yeah. And I'll try, like the last, to get farmers to deliver a little bit of food to us, so that we i de første par dage, så, sub, så får de mad fra farmen, og så supplerer vi det op med vores egen. Og sidste gang løs det os at gøre over 14 dage, så det håber jeg, at vi kan få igen i dag. Nej, det kan vi så ja. prøve Nej, det håber jeg, at han går med til. Ja. Det gør jeg, fordi det var meget lettere sidste gang. Ja. Enrichment is incredibly important when we are dealing with our animals in general. Enrichment keeps the animals happy and healthy mentally and physically. It's an activity that sort of breaks the daily patterns in the animals' lives and makes sure they don't get bored. 
And when we are dealing with rescue animals, it is a little bit different than a normal healthy animal psyche or physical state as well. For instance, with the fur farm foxes, we could see that the animals were coming from small confined spaces, which means that they didn't know that the world were bigger per se. So it it's going to be first of all a big enrichment in itself just getting into a bigger enclosure and their physical state of going on the wired fence were also making their sort of mobility being very very bad in the start but in general we started out slow with the enrichment after they got into the initial enclosure their initial just getting food getting into the quarantine area is an enrichment in itself but because a fox is a very uh, intelligent animal needs stimulation physically and mentally uh, and gradually as said in our rescue case we started doing small uh, enrichments with them it could be a carrot to each of them in the start or an egg in the start and we could see sort of a teeny bit of overstimulation in their instincts kicking in like when they gave them an egg for the first time we first of all made sure everybody got one each and they were kind of separated so they wouldn't fight we were looking over the entire sort of enrichment operation but we can see the fox started digging it down trying to eat it at the same time and guarding it from the other foxes so it was like a one big mix of uh, feelings and enrichment stimulation all in one but how cute that that were it also is an important sort of um it's important thing to look over this to make sure it doesn't get too much it don't we don't want to overstimulate them so our entire sort of plan and work in this were gradually introducing them to more and more enrichment and we have been just seeing amazing progress with the animals over time and today they are able to get an enrichment each in a good and healthy manner. Så og så 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 er det jo igen spørgsmålet om at de lige så tykke mm. øh, som de sidste. Øh, og jeg har en fornemmelse af at vi nok skal have jeg, jeg tror ikke de er de er nok ikke vaccineret. Og mm. over med kur ligesom sidst. Så jeg jeg tænker at vi skal have kurt på med det samme. Øh, til både at give ormekur, det gør vi selvfølgelig selv, men at vaccinere, øh, og så kan vi chip dem ja, på samme tidspunkt. Der var den sidste altså rigtig god til det, ja. der med up to date ja. med alt. Så, ja, nej. det var det. Men, øh, og så har jeg jo talt meget, meget kort med Fødevarestyrelsen mm. Nord, som har anbefalet mig at skrive en kontrakt med ham, og det gjorde jeg også med den sidste, og det vil mm. jeg selvfølgelig også gøre med ham. Så. Jamen, så er der jo styr på ja. det, så er der ikke nogen misforståelse. Ja. Så det kan jo godt være, at det går over nogle af jeres fridag. Ja, men vi, vi, vi er klar til det. Ja. Vi har allerede snakket om det derude. Ja. Så, så folk, folk er villige til at blive ja. rundt og ja. komme ind og det hele. Så. Ja. Og det kan jo være anden juledag, tredje juledag, mm. eller det kan være nytårsaften. Det er jo spørgsmål, hvornår, så må vi jo bare køre. Ja, nej, nej, folk er helt, ja. helt cool med ja. at det er være klar til at træde til med sådan. Ja, så ja, men... Øhm, jeg har talt med, med Fødevarestyrelsen Øst, som jo er vores egen, og hun har henvist mig op til Fødevarestyrelsen øh, Nord, mm. hvor jeg har talt med en sød dyrlæg deroppe. Og de er jo selvfølgelig, de holder jo kortene tæt til kroppen. Men, men altså... Nej, det kan jeg forestille mig. Jeg har sagt til dem, at øh, vi informerer kun om det, de siger, og ikke hvad andre siger. Så, så vi forsøger at holde dem, som vi plejer. Ikke? Super. Så... Ja. Men så er det jo ellers bare det, fordi jeg siger, ja. så går vi ned og sørger for karantænen, så kan vi altså snakke om det bagefter, ja. når det er, vi har fået styr på den. Ja, så det er nok det, vi, altså, vi skal bare sørge for at være fuldstændig klar. Og det, det handler jo om karantæne, og det handler om mad, og det handler om dyrlæge. Ja. Så, ja. altid. Altid.